Hello and welcome to the breakdown for all my new Torment Sub 30. In this video you will see the setups and magicites I used, what made my soul bricks work, etc. You will not see any awakenings except in type 0, but instead I used Machina USB and a shared heal on Deuce, so hopefully that's fair to you. You will see some setups where Magi was farmed, but not more than 100. I always increased offensive stats. Artifacts were picked for FF1 and 4. Some were done before Medine was available, thus making it a huge improvement now. The utmost importance is to know the fight. The best source for that is TF Murphy, whose AI threads are easy to read, informative and provide you insight on every specific torment. They are entirely scripted, this means you know exactly which attack is the next and this helped me the most in every single one of them. Expect some outside the box setups and strategies, but also some very standard parties. And hopefully this video will provide you with at least some help for dealing with these endgame battles. For timestamps to jump to each torment and links to mentioned videos and reddit posts, please check the description below. This torment was done live, so there is a video. I had Sarah open the fight with her first USB and then using her burst to heal the rest of the fight. Additionally, burst soul breaks buff all stats by 20%, which led to the paralyze in phase 3 turn 1 to be shaken off immediately. Master's USB needs a crit fix to be effective. His BSB is perfect for this since the entry gives him that crit fix and also Commander 2 provides him 25 seconds of quick cast, which is perfect for sub 30 attempt. Later on, he entered USB and thanks to the crits, he also got the chase hits. I grabbed an artifact for him because both those soul breaks and the chase are purely non elemental thus he got the most advantage out of it. With Galant himself I had the most struggle. Even with two fast decks in my deck I had to have zero input delay or else his arcane wouldn't hit before sub 30, like here. Come on now please 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 please! Are you kidding? Thief has such a good skill set and legend dive that he can be used effectively without even the soul break. I had his burst though, which comes with a merry video repent buff and some hits. Thief lifted some healing duty off Sarah and does great damage, and his natural double cast from dive makes him a solid spot in any FF1 team. Warrior of Light is basically just a filler guy, although the healing smites did help to survive. His USB1 is very outdated and doesn't come with anything else than an element and a defense buff, but that's all I needed for him to fit in. This torment was done live, and I made a reddit post too. Prior to its release I found 100 magia points for everyone, with no native double castles I knew this isn't gonna be easy. Going without last end or any override for Frecchio's self buff is extremely hard since Starfall hurts so badly, but I had no choice. If you go for sub 30, right before this Starfall there is a poison paralyzed attack on slot 1 and 5. I had Firion and Guy self heal right after that attack, so they survived the Starfall regardless of lost them, and it worked. I also had to time Maria's Arcane to hit right after the Poison and Paralyze attack, so I had enough time to push out phase 4 immediately, or else he would have self buffed defenses and dropped my TPS too much. Maria, Emperor and Binwu have the standard soul breaks you expect them to have. But Holy Firion is now a thing and healing smites provide that little self heal he needed. Guy is actually pretty bad in his own torment because capping is very easy in the realm chain, this is in Parasol lost and he doesn't have double cast at all. But he filled in to survive the starfall and he even got the finishing blow. Additional setup from my friend Charles in Discord. He managed to get a sub 30 with Layla using her unique soul break which grants Sestega and Shelga. Very nice way to think outside the box and you can get the soul break for lenses now. This torment was done in private, but I made a video and a reddit post. I was torn very long. Who should be my fifth slot here? 
but after a while, since none of my other characters had anything really worthwhile to excuse the extra setting up just for the petrify, I went with four people. I was at the impression I would need two arcanes, most likely, but luckily not. Lunev was in slot 3 because the most attacks hit there and he was able to self heal with his USB 2. Ark was in slot 4, so in case a death attack occurs, my DPS wouldn't suffer. Overall I can say, this tournament was very straightforward and I didn't even need to properly look at the script because all that Ariman does is... damage. I just healed when necessary and waited for a good RNG run. This torment was done live, and I made a reddit post too. Everyone knows Edge's SSB power by now. And finally, it's available to all. I can safely say, this torment was the most fun. Randomly getting the idea of slotting a very underused Fusoya, but I don't have anyone else. <laughs> Then even realizing Drain was a perfect fit to survive slot 3 and using very old Edward super for a mage party and no problem either. It was so fun to make something so unique work. The first phase is very standard but a bit rough for slot 3 so Fusoya used Drain to survive but still get enough Solberg bars for the BSB entry. Edge makes this tournament, in my opinion, the easiest to get a sub 40 now due to how easily you can survive with him. Calgabrina's 3rd to 5th phase always start with either a non-lethal attack or a dodgeable attack, so it was a breeze and just depended on double cast energy to make the push with up 30. This torment was done live, so there is a video. I'll keep it short since this is a very pretty standard team and it was done in November 18. The two things I can say is that this was a tough decision between Galuf and Dorgan, but I needed the Fire in Peril more than I needed the Earth in Peril because I already brought it as a Magicide. And the other thing is that Creelus Brave USB doesn't synergize very well with Legend Materia 2 since Quick Cats don't stack too good, but she also brought an Arcane, so definitely overkill setup here. This torment was done live, so there is a video. Again, a not so special setup, but a good execution. Since my Terra had Arcane, I let Locus sleep for 10 seconds of the fight. It was not necessary to wake him up at all. I dealt with the first sleep through Enkidu, and the second one was dodged by Shadow's physical blink. My setup is pretty overkill, but look at this. A friend of mine in Discord, Charles, used this crazy poverty setup and got this up 30. Crucial was to skip the second sleep, which was hard to do, but if you time everything right with Realm, it is possible without an arcane. This torment was done live, so there is a video. I didn't have every USB 2 and I still don't have it, so this was almost the most annoying torment to deal with. Getting dispelled and the need to dispel, crazy damage income, tentacle management, slotting issues and all that. The hardest part was definitely precasting dispel and Hastega so Aerith could do all her stuff and she's very occupied there without Kate Sif. The only way to really survive phase 3 and onwards without Lost Hand is to nuke it down immediately and that's what I did. Tifa Arcane and Cloud Arcane finished the job before you could destroy me. I saw others doing this as well with just one Arcane, so there's no need for two of them. Yes! Yes! There we yes! This torment was done in private, but I made a video and a Reddit post. I simply didn't have the DPS to push through if I slotted Selfie in any scenario, but when I analyzed the script, I was certain that Raijin is enough to survive this. 
He did need some help from Quistis's HP stock from the USB at the start, but he did the rest alone. The second HP stock was wasted due to Gravia eating 75% of it away. Don't forget that you can lysophone your teammates. And that's how I got rid of the sleep on Quistis. I've done this sub 40 a very long time ago, somewhere in November 18. But the final push I got from the Brave USB buff that lets you have immediately level 2 Brave. Thus making black magic not a necessity so I could bring Renoa with witch spells for much more hits and damage. Squall used USB 1, yes the very crappy one, to gain two final quick casts in the end. Because of that I didn't lose a command to execute and won an extra attack in sub 30 and got the finisher from the USB 1 as well. Turns out I didn't even need it in this run. But uh... <laughs> This torment was done in private, but I didn't record a video. Surprisingly, I did this torment on my second try. But explaining how I did this makes more sense. At this point I was almost done with all the torments except 2 and type 0, so I was already used to using the scripts, timing rehaste and all of that stuff. There's three things I want to mention for executing this run. First I used Garnett's chain and then overrode it with the realm chain, similar to how most people override Zack's chain with the realm chain in Final Fantasy 7. Secondly, Garnett also used her old Super Soul Break to rehaste since Aiko didn't have her USB 1 ready at the time. And Kuja only went in with OSB and Ledge Material Relic, which resulted him in only spamming Dark Zones and Overstrikes. This realm is very strong, the only downside is their elements are spread left and right, but that shouldn't be an issue once you are more experienced with torments. This torment was done live, and I made a reddit post too. People don't even know what they can already achieve here. My buff was a very very old Riku Super Soul Break, which can be acquired from Acolyte Archives and now Animal Lenses. And the only survival tools I needed were very old Yuna Super Soul Break and Seymour's Self Heal, that's all. Also, the DPS USBs I used are old and almost everyone should have them or an upgrade already. The secret here is that Unalaska starts very slot heavy, so if you target your heals accordingly and get a soul break bar through that, you could survive the finale by spamming Unus super soul break. I did this torment sub 40 a month prior too, so don't hesitate and go try. Uh, double! Yes! Oh, it's not enough! Ah, oh, come on! Yes! 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 So close! Yes! This torment was done in private, but I didn't record a video. I was, just like in Final Fantasy 1, very lucky to get most of the stuff here from realm draws and parades. There isn't anything particular to say here, I checked the script for when to rehaste and went to cast my physical abilities after the barrier was gone. I can safely say Shantoto Arcane wasn't needed, since I did the Arcane at almost invisible HP. I had the Legend Material Relic equipped and it triggered once in the winning run. Overall said, this torment isn't tricky at all, a mouse USB is definitely not needed, I've seen setups where it was just the BSB used. This torment was done live, so there is a video. This is the elephant in the room. I had a very very hard time figuring out who to empower with magicide passives since the elements here are all over the place and without an arcane you absolutely need precise timing to at least skip one of the immunities. I was able to bring very underused Rex, who is usually replaced by Bash for slot saving, in this case has Tega and Dispel. Needing to debuff and dispel and slot so many things and no focused element, I really don't recommend trying to sub 30 without arcane or awakening. It's just too much headache to go through, trust me. I never changed this setup aside from 100 magi on everyone, so that was making the difference in the end. Yes, yes, yes! Oh! This fucking...
Ten torment. This torment was done in private, but I didn't record a video. While this team is definitely strong, I was at first using Seth's Unique for slot saving Shelga and I did get the sub 40 almost, but the defensive buffs in his USB is what made the little but important difference to survive. I even brought debuffs just to reduce the damage a little and to override the Hawker's self buff. You can definitely use his Unique if you have Vanille through Gengar USB, but her BSB suffices for this torment if done right. She called the second chain while Fang called the first. Reigns Wrath twice and entered BSB and entered USB when ready. He does the exact same in my arc and Madin sub 30 in case you want to see that in a video. I need to mention Lightning specifically here. Doing twice a 6 star ability with Ace Striker and getting hit twice gives you enough Soul Break boss for a Soul Break after 2 attacks. So she can instantly enter USB 1 or any other Soul Break you have with a 3 instant cast at the start. Instead of Sapphire Bullet, you can now use Healing Smite, but you can use Flash Disaster since Celerity abilities give less Soul Break Gauge due to being instant or fast cast by default. For Sass to counter debuff the Haka and rehaste in time, I had to precast Magic Breakdown precisely. This takes some practice, just like in FF7 and 12, but with some experience, you will manage. This torment was done in private, but I made a video and a reddit post. This was very difficult to achieve and I set several hours on it. No last one was involved, so Ishtala's job was the most crucial. She wasn't able to survive all the attacks on slot 2, so I defended with her during two of them, so she was able to heal right afterwards. None of her double casts were needed except the one before the first tank purge. Alfinaut can participate in any element since his whole dive is purely summoned. Additionally, Alphinaut's Super Soul Break provided the buff my team badly needed. Ida has a major problem though. Even with Fast Act 10, you have to quickly input her commands or she won't hit the final attack in sub 30. The Fast Acts only help with her first 3 attacks and 2 USB entries, but it's needed. Isail had to trigger Legend Materia 2 in a constant loop or she would be too short of sub 30, just like Ida. My run was very very close, but the real difficulty was to survive the tank purges. DPS shouldn't be a problem with new released abilities. This torment was done in private, but I didn't record a video. Iris started after the first damaging attack with her ultra and then went for her burst to heal the rest of the fight. She also casted the second chain. The first was casted by Aranea. Gladio only had his burst, but I at least had his two useful Legend Material Relics as well to go along with it. Noctis started by doing 7 flash disasters in a row to save up a good chunk of Super Soul Breaks to rush the boss down with instant cast, even if it meant the first 3 instant casts of his Legend Material 2 are wasted. Ignis first powered up Noctis crit chance, then used command 1, then Gladius crit chance, then Noctis crit damage and then went for fire assaults and the final entrance to Noctis for instant cast spam. Aranea started capping by herself very early, so there was no need to empower her at all. As you can see on the screenshot, I had to be extremely quick with Noctis SSB and ability inputs to still hit and finish in time. This torment was done in private, but I didn't record a video. The only thing mentioning here in my setup is that Alma is just using her burst and Ramsa is helping at the end with Super Soul Break Chunt. The rest of the setup is very standard and isn't worth mentioning, but what is worth mentioning is this. Again my friend from Discord, Charles, managed to get a sub 30 using Marak instead of Marsh. This proves there is no must have relic. Try some experiments and on the used jaws, perhaps you will find your own way like him. This torment was done live, so there is a video. This is my only awakening run. My plan initially was to stay true to all my other torments, so I hope for her USB 1 from the Bana and any other type 0 USB like King, 8 or Cater 2. But I got Machina USB and Ram's Uber combo first. I wasn't willing to give up my Mithril Stash to get lesser relics for a poverty setup since it was the final torment on my list. The one thing I still needed was a healer. 
and there is only Deuce. I saw sub 30s using Deuce SSP for survival, similar to how FF4 suffices with Edge and FF8 with Raijin, but I didn't even have that at the time and Anima lenses weren't out yet, so I went with a shared heal. I only needed it once, but that one time is what made the run possible after all. Timing rehaze at phase 2 and surviving nuke attacks without last hand is something I was already familiar with anyway, so the mechanics of this tournament weren't a big deal. So Machina made it into the team and by giving him Makomite he wasn't losing a single round of his quick cast and chases. In slot 5 he gets barely hit, but given that I had plenty of gosh to recast it so often, I'm pretty sure he could have been slotted elsewhere too. I planned for this setup a long time and I wanted it to be something special since it was my final torment. The Awakening hampered that a bit, but using Machina's Awakening and the Share Kill in a sub-30 Neo torment was satisfying enough to seal the deal with this content. Yeah, let Machina finish please. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes he's gonna finish. There you go. Awakening power creep. And the share till sophistic if you have it. That's it for my torment breakdown. If there's any questions, leave a comment down below or ask me directly in Discord or Reddit. I hope you enjoyed the content and got some new ideas for your attempts. Good luck!